Welcome to Grid for Life Radio, and if you have heard of us before, listen to our podcast, maybe you're sitting there going, what in the world, this does not sound like my normal Grit for Life podcast. I'm glad that you noticed. We have a new intro, and I'm excited about collaborating and working with the artist of that. That song is Transcend the Machine by rock artist Mick Blankenship. Hey, go check him out. Uh, he has given us the the opportunity and the permission to use that song at the beginning of uh, our podcast. And I really, I'll tell you, if you like good rock music, but with great punch, great lyrics, go check out Mick Blankenship. And Mick, uh, if you ha- happen to take a listen to this, I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for allowing us to be able to use that song, Transcend the Machine from your Crown of Apathy CD. Everybody else, welcome to Grid for Life Radio. And I know that we talked about, if you follow us on any of our different platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, all of them, all those, all of the different ones out there that we are a part of. You probably heard me talk about having uh, we're going to do a podcast on Friday, and we had full intention on doing that. We tried that. We had a lot of technical difficulties. We were trying to do a few different things at once. We we're trying to re- kind of integrate a lot of different aspects. We we're trying to do a live YouTube, a live TikTok, along with a podcast with some new equipment. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out the way we planned. And so what happened was the YouTube video was not good quality. I really think, honestly, the only thing that really worked out was the TikTok uh, video, the TikTok Live, because the YouTube video wasn't that great quality. The mi- new microphone that we were using for to do the podcast wasn't connecting to the computer system that we were needing it to connect to. I- I'm not going to get into everything. We just, it didn't work out. So today's Sunday, and this is the 23rd of February, 2020. And we're doing a podcast now, and we're trying to bring you, get this podcast going, getting it rolling. And what I wanted to talk to you about is similar to what we talked about if we had done a podcast, if the podcast had recorded on Friday, and that is learning to work in the red zone of our life and learning to be able to push through. But understand, so many times people think that if they fight and push through, it just means an automatic win. That's not how life is. But it doesn't doesn't mean that you don't push through. doesn't mean that you don't try to keep going. And what we talked about on our live feeds on Friday is that what I want you to do, I don't, I'm not a big, like I don't get into sports the way a lot of people do. I don't have a certain sports figure that I absolutely follow. Uh, I don't have a specific sports team that I wear their gear and get all excited about. I enjoy the essence of sports. I love the competition. I love the metaphor that sports, the sports world brings to how we are in our life. I love to watch the underdog rise up. I love to watch the high and mighty who are proud fall down. I love sports in that aspect. And I've coached sports before. I've I've been a football coach for a football team. I was I worked as a, an assistant defensive coach for a young man's fo- a young guys football team for a few years. And with that, you don't hear me say a lot of metaphor with Grit for Life. I don't use a lot of st- sports metaphors that other, maybe other um, motivational speakers do. And the reason being is because I don't, you, you already have it out there. If you want to hear that, you, there's plenty of other speakers that you can get those metaphors from. But there are other people out there who don't live the sports world. Surprise. And we can relate, but at the same time, may not hit us exactly where we are in life. With all of that being said, today I do want to use a metaphor based in the sports world, based in football. And that metaphor is that that red zone, that area 
on a football field that is that final drive into the end zone. Speaking to several individuals this last week, one-on-one, I had the opportunity to really be able to sit down and speak to a few people who have reached out to me for one-on-one support, working with them, trying to help them out. And what I saw so many times is people have said over and over, hey, you know, coach, I, I constantly am pushing and I'm pushing. I've spent my whole life just pushing and I've gotten nowhere. And so I quit. I don't want to be here anymore. I give up. And listening to that, I started having this metaphor in my head that it's kind of like being on the football field. There are football teams out there that never won a Super Bowl. There's football teams out there that can't even remember if they've got players on their team that have never had a winning season. Then you have football players out there who absolutely, they don't know how to not lose. And the thing about that is that they're in that we can find different strengths and aspects and also different things that are detrimental to who we are and to the aspect of how we view life. I want you to imagine, if you can, you and I are sitting on the sidelines of a football field. This is a big game for us. I'm your coach. You're one of our players. We have had a grueling four quarters. And we are down by one touchdown. Like, we have to get this touchdown in order for us to to win. We're down. Can't just kick a field goal. Have to get a touchdown. You come off that field. We're in that red zone. We're in those that last bit before you actually are able to get the ball into the end zone. And you come to me and you're, you're sweating. You're limping a little bit. Your body hurts. And you come and you say, Coach, I don't know if we can do this. I don't know if we can do this. And I say... I get, hey, just give me a few more seconds. You said, but I have been fighting for four quarters, coach. I've been fighting for four quarters and look where we're at. We're losing. I've given everything I have on this field and we're losing. Now look at you. I said, yeah, but if you, if you give up now and you come off that field and you already determined in your head that you're, you've lost every single thing that you've done for the last four quarters was a waste for you just to get to this point and give up. And so don't give up. And you go, but coach, I said, listen, you have a choice right now. Your response is your responsibility. You can either go out there and try to push these last couple of yards out and grind at the last couple of seconds to try to win this game. Or you can walk off the field and know that you might have had a chance, but you now know for sure that you made the choice to quit. That was your choice, nobody else's choice. You made the choice to quit and you fought every single second of every single yard of every single quarter all the way up to this point just to get to the end of it and give up. You are closer to the end than you are the beginning right now. You still have a chance in the game. And you look at me and you go, you're right, coach, you're right. And you get fired up and you go in and you the whistle blows you're, you're given the ball and you start running and you start muscling your way through the life's defenses. And all of a sudden this big linebacker comes and hits you and knocks you down to the ground. And you look up as the clock goes to zero and you look out and you see your outstretched hand and realize you didn't do it. The football's inches, inches from actually making a touchdown. You didn't do it. Game's over. Game's over. You just gave four quarters of blood, sweat, tears. You believed that you would be able to win it in the last seconds after I talked to you on the sidelines. You went out there and you're feeling that your head is about to explode. Your chest, your muscles are hurting. And you reached out thinking, waiting for that glorious moment, that highlight reel where you reach out. You get knocked down in the last seconds you reach out and you put that ball over the... Into the end zone. But not today. Nope. You're laying there on the field. The ball's outstretched. Didn't quite make it. Life's jumping around you laughing. It held you back. It held you back. 
So you come off the field and you're, I go to talk to you and you, you look at me and say, coach, you lied to me. You lied to me, coach. You said that I could do this. Coach, you said that I was going to win. Coach, you said that if I went back out there. And I said, no, you didn't hear me. I said, you had the chance to win. You are closer to winning than losing. You have fought for four quarters just to give up before you went out there and just gave up. You go, coach, but that's, that's, you don't understand. I can't hardly walk, coach. I fought and I fought and I fought and I fought just to come up short. Screw you. I grab you by the proverbial jersey and I spin you around and I get in your face and this is what I want you to hear. Just because you fight for four quarters, just because you are worn out, just because you get close to winning and you don't and it gets stripped from you doesn't mean that you lost. Yeah, you lost this game. I get that. And yes, you feel as if everything you just put into it was a loss and for nothing. And you could care less if you came back out onto the field. But the truth is you learned so much more. You learned more of how long you could push yourself. You learned that when you thought that you couldn't give any more, you were able to give more. You learn how not to do some things on the field so that you can go back and be better the next game. You see, it isn't about the game. It isn't about just this moment. So many people that I talk to tell me, Coach, you have no idea. I have I have sat there and fought for year after year after year after year. And I, you don't know what your quarter looks like in your life. Maybe you've only fought through one quarter. And you have got to keep fighting. And it's up to you whether to determine to see how far your mind and your body can stretch. And yet I hear over and over people giving me excuses. I am not saying you're not hurting. And I am not saying that you're not worn out. I'm not saying that life has kicked you in the groin. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that it hasn't happened. But don't you dare come off life's field. And come whining and complaining to me and just say you want to quit and you want to give up when you fought this long. You're basically telling you, myself, and everybody else that everything you put into it up to this point was a waste. And it's only a waste if you quit. It was only a waste if you quit. Basically, you have hurt. You have hurt up to this point. You have lost up to this point. You have been worn out up to this point. But it is not a waste unless you give up here and now. You can't change the hurt in the past. You can't change the pain in the past. You can't change the loss in the past. But you can sure as hell make it worth it in the future. Then how How do I not quit? How do I not quit, coach? Okay, so you lost this game. All right, so you reached out. The ball didn't make it across. I get that. I understand that. So now let's get in this next weekend. Let's take a look at the film. Let's look at the look at the film of what you did right and wrong. Not just what you did wrong and not what you just did right. But see, that's the thing. You, in our life, what we do is we lose the we lose a game. We lose a moment. We lose an event, and we lose several in a row. And what we do is either A, we give up, or B, we go and we want to take a look at all all the stuff that it was the fans. It was the fans. When we look at the tape, instead of looking at our play on the field, we're listening to the fans in the stands going, oh, the fans in the stands were booing me, coach. The fans in the stands were saying, yelling out my number and saying all kinds of derogative things about my number, coach. Man, the refs, the refs, coach, they had it against us. I don't care whether it's the refs. I don't care what the fans are saying. I don't care if the stadium's open or closed. What I want you to do is turn that volume off and look at your plays on the field. What are you doing on the field 
that is making it a good play or a bad play. And I want you to learn from both. I want you to learn from your successes and I want you to learn from your mistakes so that the next time you get out on the field, you don't care who the refs are. You don't care what field you're playing on. You don't care if the stands are full or halfway empty. You know what you've got to do because you learned from last week's game or you learned from the last couple of games. Or you can just give up. You can come in on on Saturday after the game and hand me your jersey and say, you know what, I give up. I'm done, coach. I'm done. I go, what do you mean you're done? Coach, We, I want, I want to play for a winning team. Really? You want to play for a winning team? Well, guess who's part of that team? You are. And so if you're not playing for a winning team, then what are you doing to make it a winning team? See, we sit there and want to point our fingers at everything else. And when things don't go our way, we want to quit. We want to hang up our jersey. We want to go whine to the media. We want to go complain. We want to blame everything else instead of taking a look at the thing. If you could sit there and say, listen, I know I've had it rough. And I know I've, I've, I've fought and I've fought and I've fought and I've fought. And I know what I can do, but I'm not doing it. So what do I need to do? You need to get back in, get on the training field, spend that next week. We talk about it in our Grip for Life workshops. We talk about it all the time of when we do our four-week workshops, the first couple of weeks is really just getting you geared up. And then the set, then that third week and that last week, we really start driving it home. And then there's a reason for that. You need to come back to the basics. You need to come back to the basics of what life is and what you can do in life and stop giving up excuses. So this is what I want to do. I'm going to give you some, I want to give you some basics. I want to give you some basics. Get your notebook out, get your journal out. I don't care what you do. I want you to, I want you to take this to heart. I want you to, first of all, write down, there's no excuse. Write down that real big, right on the top of the page, no excuse. And I want every single time you start thinking about why, why, if it is, if that why has anything to do with you pointing your finger at anything else or anybody else for your success or your failures or your mistakes, your glory, then you better point at that no excuse. There's no excuse. When I give you the ball, I give you the ball. You hold on to that ball. No excuse. You give it everything you've got every single time. You'll have a chance to have the water boy come out and give you some water, but not until it's it's time. And yes, if you do need to come off the field for a second, I'm going to pull you off the field for a second. But while you're on the side of the field, you better not be whining and complaining. You better not come up to me and say, coach, coach, the rep. No, you better be on the side of that field, healing yourself out, stretching out, walking, doing whatever you can to get back in the game. No excuse. No excuse. And then I want you to write down this. It's my priorities. What am I, what do I need to work on right now? I don't need a defensive player to start working on receiving. Their priority is holding that offensive line and stopping plays. That's the priority. So many times we get our priorities mixed up. I have people tell me, man, you know, coach, I want to go back to school, but I can't afford it. I'm going to go back to school, but I can't afford it. Oh, you can't afford it, but you were out last Friday night spending $200 on drinks. You were dropping $50. I know, coach, but it was only $50. But that's $50 you could have put towards your books. And then Sunday, you were sitting there watching the NFL Red Zone Network. How much did that cost you a month? Oh, but coach, I got I got, I got to watch my, my ball, my guys, my coach, NFL ticket. Come on, Sunday ticket. But how much did it cost you? How much are you paying extra? I don't know, hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. So there's one hundred fifty dollars that goes towards your book. But coach, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta have time with my friends. I gotta have time with my, my watching, watching my sports. That's my me time. Oh, so what you're telling me is your priorities are your me time first, and then your schooling. But you want to complain that you don't have money in time for school. Ah, oh, coach, but, and then on the way, I'll tell you what. On the way to your deadbeat job that you can't stand. 
on Monday, I saw you heading to that job that doesn't make you happy, but you can't leave it because you don't have the training that you need to have to get out of that. I saw you stop by that coffee joint and I saw you buy at least one to two cups of coffee, some of that gourmet stuff. They're like five bucks a piece. There's 10 when you could have made a whole pot of cheap coffee at the house for a dollar or less. Ah, oh, but that's like my comfort. That's my comfort. What's your priorities? Do not come and complain to me that you're not able to reach your goals when you're not willing to give up the comfort. That's the next thing I want you to write down. What are my priorities? Then I want you to put them down. What is my priority? And then you know you have four quarters in a game. In football, you have four quarters. We're going to readjust this. We're going to take a look at it at halftime. So what you do is what, where, where do I need to be before halftime? I want you to write that down. Where do I need to be before halftime? Halftime, let's say it's two months out. We're going to do four months, a four-month plan right now. Now understand, I am not, I'm not big, I'm big on goals, but I'm, I'm more on progression. Do you understand that? We do need to have goals that we need to be, strive towards. But I, people don't understand that when they, when they take a look at my life and they go, man, you seem, at times, you seem like the things that you do are all over the board. And that's because I am looking toward a progressiveness of me as a person. And in that, my goals may change, but I do have goals that I'm shooting for. And so what I want you to do is right now is your goals may change over the next two months, but they better not change just based off of excuse. They better change it based off of you have matured and become a more progressive person in what you're looking for. And that is why your life goals change. Not because it got hard, not because you got excuses, but because instead you said, man, I was shooting for this. But then some stuff came up in my life that changed it for the better and made me realize that's not really where I want to be, but I am a better person than I was. So what we're going to do is halftime is two months. So I want you to write down, where am I going to be in two months? You're going to take your priorities. I don't, I don't know if it's school. I don't know if it's savings. Heck, I don't, you know what? Sometimes we talk about all the successful stuff. Maybe it's you want to go on a vacation and you're constantly saying, I can't go on a vacation. I don't have the money. I wish I could have the money, but you're out buying all this stuff you don't need. That's your vacation. You're drinking away your vacation every single day. You're fast fooding your vacation every single day. So it doesn't even have to be something where it's a job. You're coming to me and saying, no, I love my job. I have a good family. I love my job. I love my life. I just never get a chance to take a break. I can't afford to take a break. Whatever it is, I want you to write your priority down. I want you to write where you're going to be in two months. That's your half time. And then what I want you to do is sit there and I want you to put that up somewhere, preferably on a mirror where you get ready, somewhere you're going to see every single day. No excuses, your priorities, and where do you want to be at halftime? And, that, and you better look at that every single day. And what you do then is you take a look and you sit there and say, okay, whatever I'm about to do, does that match with my priorities? And will it get me to halftime where I want to be at halftime? Will it set me up for the second half? You're going to work for a blowout where you have so many points on the board at halftime. that You don't have to worry about the red zone at the end of the game. How are you going to strategize this? How are you going to prioritize this? What are you going to do? Whatever you are going to do, what you're not going to do is come off the field and look at me whine and complain and say you quit. Your response is your responsibility. The thing about the jerseys is your last name is on that jersey. You make your last name proud. I don't care if you who came before you and what they did with that last name. You are now carrying your last name on the back of your jersey. So I want you to do that today. So that when that moment comes, and your body's hurting, and you're worn out. And you're ready to quit. You come off the field and I look at you and I say, are you really going to quit? It's not even a question. You're going to say no. I'm going to say, well, you may not win. I may not win this time, coach. But I'm sure going to give it all I got in order to try. And if I don't, I'm going to learn so I can win next time. I appreciate you guys listening and being part of Grip for Life. Check us out on Facebook, TikTok, 
Twitter, Instagram. Check us out on iHeartRadio. We're now on Apple, Tunes, and Spotify. Thank you guys. Grid for life. Motivating the mind. Don't try.